Hello and welcome to the second video uh, about managing your water. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the practicalities of working out your adjustments you know and how you assess which uh, additions to make for brew day. I'm going to use brew and water which is what we're in now. This is my choice of water management software. There are other options out there. Check them all out. They all work in a similar way. So here we are in brewing water and if you look along the bottom you can see that there are six tabs and we're going to work through from left to right. So at the moment I'm in the water report input tab. So there I've zoomed in a bit and in the top um, cyan or blue area here you can see the area where you enter the major and most important um, ions from your water report. You need to get yourself a water report from your water uh, company. Uh, if you can't get one or if it doesn't include what you need, we can talk later about some of your options for dealing with that. So I've entered into here the principal values from my water report, calcium, magnesium, sodium, bicarbonate, carbonate, sulfate and chloride. And I did have values for some of the optional ones as well, uh, nitrate, fluoride and potassium. My water report doesn't actually include bicarbonate and carbonate, but uh, it did include total alkalinity here. So brewing water does have uh, an area in this water input screen where if you know your total alkalinity, which is what we discussed in video one, and you know your uh, water pH, it will calculate or estimate for you your bicarbonate and carbonate uh, concentrations. These are really important for getting your pH right later. And I simply entered those values up here into the water report. So normally you would just uh, do this once unless your water changes. It probably is a good idea to check your water periodically, especially the total alkalinity, if you've got the ability to do that. And again, I'll talk about that later. In brewing water, anything which is yellow colored, yellow colored sounds like this, are calculated cells and you won't be able to enter values into them. In this case it's the spreadsheet, it's just checking the logic of the values that I've entered and ideally this difference here should be uh, close to zero. Um, a value of 0.1 or less it says shows good agreement with the totals um, and if it doesn't fall within 0.5 then I've probably got a figure wrong but I've got 0.4 there so I'm happy with that. Throughout brewing water, as is traditional in the spreadsheets, if you see a little red corner like that and you hover over it, it will pop up with some help uh, to help you with that particular feature. So now I've gone into the Sparger certification tab, that's the second tab. Uh, this is another tab that you probably don't use very often, just set it up when you first use the program. And this is where you tell brewing water whether you want to acidify your sparge water and if so with what. Now it's generally considered to be a really good idea to acidify your sparge water. Bear in mind that uh, tap water is going to be between 6.5 and 8.5 pH. It's going to have some uh, alkalinity in there as we've said in video one. And if you sparge with untreated water what might happen is that the grain bed pH gradually increases during the sparge and towards the end of the sparge you could be uh, have a grain bed there with quite an alkaline pH and that's bad for pulling through undesirable uh, substances out of the um, grain bed and can result in some flavour anomalies and some astringency. So in here uh, this is the same figure as I entered in my first uh, tab uh, same value for pH. This isn't uh, carried forward for some reason. This is carried forward. Um, if you're going to dilute uh, your sparge water at all, you can select it there. I'll come back to that later. Um, the target pH defaults to 5.5, which is typical. You can change it if you wish. And then I've selected phosphoric acid as my acid type. You can change that to different uh, acids just by clicking on that pop down there you see lactic, phosphorus, sulfuric etc. Phosphoric is what I use and then you need to tell it the um, acid strength and it's 75% uh, acid strength in this case. 
So that's set up, that's all uh, I need to do in that tab for the time being and now we'll move on to the third tab which is the grain bill input. So here we are now in the grain bill input which is tab 3 and this is where you enter your recipe. So you recall from video 1 that the key ingredients into your, your water chemistry are the grain bill and your starting water profile. We've entered the starting water profile. This is where you enter your grain bill. So this is where you will change the, uh, your grain bill for each brew that you do. This is also where up here you can name the, the brew for that reason. What you do is um, type anything you like in here. This is just free text to identify the type of grain. Tell uh, brewing water what type of grain it is choosing from base malt, crystal roast or acid malt, how much you're putting in, kilograms or grams, um, and then the colour. I've put it here in EBC units, you can use Lovey Bond as well if you wish, that's changed down here. Uh, and it gives you the percentage of grain bill just as a calculation here. The reason it needs the colour, of course, as you'll recall from video one, that uh, roasted malts um, contribute more to the acidification of the mash than lightly coloured malts. So it uses the colour as a proxy for that. Um, you can find this from the packaging on the malt that you've purchased and or uh, recipe programmes like Beersmith will give you an EBC or Lovely Bond value as well for the different malts. If you can enter a value in here that's inconsistent with the type of malt so if I said this was really dark, 500, it would go red to warn me that that doesn't seem to be a sensible value for that type of grain. Okay, so that's very straightforward. You are going to change this each time. Gives you an estimate of the colour of your beer down here. Gives me a, an estimate at the moment of what my mash pH is going to be. And as you can see, that's 5.9 and it's warning me that I need to reduce the alkalinity somehow. We'll get onto that in a moment. And it's given me some suggested pH ranges here for light, or dark, or particularly crisp styles of uh, beer. So that's all there is to that. You're going to be using this sheet quite a lot. Um, and depending on what value, what uh, version of brewing water you've got, you'll save a sheet for each brew that you do. That's what I do. Uh, or with the latest version, it will use macros to save and reload different beers. So finally we arrive in tab 4, which is the water adjustment tab, which is where we do all the work of building our profile. So just to show you around this sheet uh, overall, at the top here, all the yellow boxes, yellow means read only, is where brewing water has given us feedback on our current water profile which is this row here and our finished water profile which at the beginning of course is exactly the same as the current water profile till we begin to change it. Here is the pH which as you can see 5.97 there's two alkaline at the moment. All the cyan blue cells here is where we enter our adjustments such as gypsum, calcium chloride, magnesium chloride etc. Um, brewing water doesn't do that for you, it's up to you to add and remove your additions here and look to see the feedback it gives you on your profile. So what I always do uh, when I first come in here is choose the type of beer that I want to make on this desired water profile pop down here. I've got pale ale selected at the moment but in here there's a whole range of different cities there are some generic profiles for things like a yellow beer that's full, a yellow beer that's balanced, a yellow beer that's dry and hoppy. I tend to use those generic profiles the most, but as this is an IPA uh, that we're working on, I'm going to choose pale ale profile. And then brewing water fills in in this row here, the suggested mineral contents for a pale ale. So let's zoom in on this top area. Okay, so you can see that for a pale ale, brewing water is suggesting 113 parts per million of calcium, 300 parts per million of sulphate and 55 parts per million of chloride. And it's chloride, sulphate and calcium that we're particularly focused on. If you hover over these, the little tooltips pop up and tell you 
the significance of each of these ions and uh, what role they're playing. But chloride and sulfur are particular flavor ions in your beer. Now, because I've got quite minerally water, the first thing I always do is look to see whether any of my levels are already too high. So you can see here that in my water, the chloride's already higher than 55. Now, when we're going for 300 of sulfate, that probably doesn't matter. But for illustration purposes, I'll just show you what I would do to reduce that, because I often do have to reduce my mineral content. So the option you've got really is diluting principally with something like distilled water or reverse osmosis water. I use reverse osmosis water because that's what I can get most easily. And you come to this cell here and say, okay, marine water, I'm gonna dilute my tap water with 20%, say, of reverse osmosis water. You choose the arrow here, reverse osmosis. You've got a choice here of distilled water, reverse osmosis. Or, so, or something you can customize. So I've chosen reverse osmosis. And that now has taken us from 72 parts per million of chloride down to 65. So I've still got somewhere to go. But remember that my sparge water is just the same, so it will be adding minerals as well. So I'm going to jump back into tab two, where I deal with sparging. And I'm going to, in this cell here, so that I'm also going to dilute my sparge water with 20% reverse osmosis water. Let's go back and have a look in the water adjustment tab. Now you can see I've got the chloride to 58 parts per million when we're aiming for 55. So I'm happy with that, that's near enough. Now we need to address the sulfate level. I need to get it from 87 um, right up to 300. And of course my sulfate has gone down a bit now if anything because I've been diluting my water. I also need a lot more calcium, so the obvious thing to add is calcium sulfate, which is gypsum here. So let's start by adding, say, 0.2 grams per litre. This is done in grams per litre, not the total amount to add. That's calculated for you. So I've put in 0.2 there. It's got me to 181 and 94. I'm obviously going to need quite a bit more than that, so let's try 0.4. So that's now got me to 293 parts per million of sulphate, which is near enough to 300 for me, and 141 of calcium, which is higher than the normal recommended level of calcium. They normally recommend that you stay to 100 at maximum. But the pop-up um, advice here does say calcium should not typically exceed 100 parts per million unless it has to be added to provide a desirable ion, an ion like sulphate to the water. So because we're pushing it up because of the sulphate, brewing water says that's okay. Now take a look at the pH, and you can see that the pH has gone from that 5.96 we started with to 5.68. So the mineral additions, in particular the calcium, has helped to acidify our mash a bit, but it's still too alkaline, so we need to address that now. So I've scrolled down now to, so we can see the acid additions here. So we're going to add some acid to get this down further. Now you need to tell brewing water which acid you're going to use with this pop down. So you've got a selection of phosphoric, hydrochloric, lactic, etc. And in the paid for version of brewing water, you get CRS, carbonate reducing solution, which is a proprietary um, uh, mix of acids and you need to tell it the strength that you're using. I normally use phosphoric because if you use hydrochloric or sulfuric or CRS, it also adds chloride and or sulfate to your um, profile. And then you're going round in a bit of a loop trying to get that sorted out again. So I prefer, phos prefer phosphoric or lactic. What I've got to hand is phosphoric 75%. So I'm going to use that. So let's try 0.1 mil per litre of phosphoric. That gets us to 5.47. This has gone green now because at least we're in the correct range of 5.2 to 5.6. But for my hoppy beer, I want this nearer to 5.2 to 5.3. So let's try 0.2. 
in that cell and now I'm at 5.26 so I'm happy with that I'm going to stop there in these cells here we need to tell brewing water the mash volume that we're using and the sparge volume that we're using I've been on the grandfather calculator and got the right volumes for 5.9 kilogram mash and then it will use that to multiply up our additions and tell us we need to add 7.8 grams of gypsum calcium sulfate into our mash water and 7 grams of gypsum into our sparge water. Now with your sparge water those of you that know your numbers will know this is a bit high for 5.9 kilogram mash and that's because you need to remember to add in the any dead space in your hot water heater so I know my hot water heater has 4.2 litres of dead space so really the sparge volume is 13.2 I've added 4.2 on to allow for that dead space to make sure that these additions are correct for the volume that I'm using once we put those in it will also calculate the total acid addition 3.9 mil going into my mash 3.2 mil going into my sparge water and that's the job done really on this page you go up and down here adding and taking away different minerals until you gradually get to the profile that you need up here and then the final tab to show you is the adjustment summary so this is where Brewing Water pulls together all the information you need on Brew Day and I tend to print out this one uh, tab and stick it in my brewing record. So it tells me the additions that I need to make to the mash water, to my sparge water, it tells me at the acid to add to my mash water and sparge water and reminds me of the profile that I've built. So I stick this in my um, record book as a record of the water that I've used for that particular brew uh, and I use it as well to tick off these additions on brew day as I make those additions to the water. So that's the job done, we've built our profile, we've got our additions worked out, we're all ready for brew day.